Hello, and thanks for joining me on a little adventure to Bursa. This city in the northwest of Turkey was once the capital of the Ottoman Empire, and it's home to many places with historical significance. I've been to Bursa a few times and have done quite a few of the popular tourist attractions already, so I can't say this is a complete list in the slightest of everything that there is to do here. But still, I thought it might be interesting for you to see just some of what the city has to offer. Luckily, our friends that host us are very knowledgeable about history and were the perfect tour guides. But of course, before venturing out for the day, we had to fuel up with some breakfast. In addition to being excellent tour guides, our friends also have really great taste in food, and we were able to try out a lot of delicious dishes while we were here. They took us to this breakfast restaurant called Pasto, and we sampled some traditional Turkish kavalta dishes, as well as wonderful bread items. I enjoyed the concept here where you could just pick out some of the things that were already prepared. Of course, there were a variety of olives, cheese, uh, jams, clotted cream, and lots of spreads. The bread was freshly baked and the aroma filled the air. We picked out a nice mix of plates from the cooler, got a big basket of bread, and ordered some menemen, which is a traditional egg dish. And as you can imagine, there were quite a few glasses of Turkish tea to enjoy. After a filling breakfast, we headed a bit further into town, and our first stop was the Kara Göz Museum. It houses a collection of Ottoman-era shadow puppets, and it provides their history. There were popular shadow puppet characters during the Ottoman period known as Hajivat and Kara Göz, which were based on a real-life mason and blacksmith. These shadow puppets were originally made from animal skins that had been stretched thin and then dyed with various colors. It was a popular form of entertainment during Ottoman times, and apparently the humor could be a bit cruel at times, but funny nonetheless. Later, these shadow puppet shows were displayed on TV, and my husband actually remembers watching them as a kid during the Ramazan holidays. The museum is free to enter, and it's quite small, so you don't need to spend much time. Next, we headed over to check out a famous mausoleum here in Borsa. The first six sultans of the Ottoman Empire are buried in Borsa, and this one, called the Yeshil Tomb, is home to the tomb of Mehmet I, who was the fifth sultan, and it was built back in 1421. Yeshil in Turkish means green, and the mausoleum is given its name because of the tile work. However, if you ask me, these look a little bit more blue than green, but maybe I'm missing something. Many of the tiles had to be replaced after damage from a large earthquake, but originally tiles from the nearby city of Iznik, which is known for its tile work, were used, and I actually made a video talking about this in the past that I'll go ahead and link here. We also took a stroll on the Arganda Bridge. This little bridge is said to be one of four covered market-style bridges in the world. It was built in 1442, and both sides of the bridge are lined with little shops. Borsa was located along trade routes, and so markets like this played an important role during that period. Today, there are small shops, some selling trinkets and art. Thank you. 
After a little walk, we ended up in the area of Kapala Charsha. This is a covered marketplace consisting of lots of smaller, more defined markets. It's always bursting with people, especially on the weekend. Here, there are various vendors selling all sorts of goods. And as I mentioned, Bursa was an important trading post in the Ottoman Empire, and so bazaars like this were of significant importance. Although I'm sure a lot has changed over the years, I imagine the workers and patrons were still drinking plenty of Turkish chai back then. Our friend suggested we stop to get this type of treat that seemed to be commonly sold here called Majun Shekeri, and she said that her grandpa actually used to sell these, so it brought back some good memories. It's basically like a soft sucker, but in Turkish fashion, there's lemon juice added to the outside. Upon stepping into the area selling cheese, olives, and meats, I came across this very unusual cheese. I had to do a double take to see if my eyes were playing tricks on me, but no, they weren't. This type of goat cheese is actually aged in the hide of a goat. And I think maybe this is one of those things you just have to eat and not really ask any questions about where it came from. <laughs> mostly categorized by the type of items that are being sold. There is a section for gold jewelry, silver jewelry, clothes, towels, foods, you name it. And I notice it like that a lot in Turkey. For example, if you want to get furniture, you'll often find groups of furniture stores together, or all the banks are situated nearby, and so on. It makes it really convenient. One thing I was most looking forward to seeing was the Koza Han. This open marketplace was used for the silk trade, and shops surround the bustling square in the middle, still selling silk to this day. The Silk Road stopped in Borsa, and so the city became famous for its silk production starting in the 15th century. Last time I was here, there was actually a gentleman hand spinning silk in the courtyard, and I was hoping he was here today, but we must have missed him. Maybe next time I'll be able to catch him. You can find silk in all forms and little shops here nearby in nearly every color and style under the sun, and you can even buy silk by the meter. One day I dream of having a 100% silk skirt, but until then I picked myself up a little handkerchief and I can't wait to wear it. Right next to the bazaar is the famous Ulu Jami or Grand Mosque. This is a very popular tourist attraction here in Bursa, and that will be easy to see by the sheer number of people visiting. The mosque was built in the late 1300s, and although it's hard to tell unless you get a better view from high up, the mosque is actually comprised of 20 smaller domes. It's also well known for its calligraphy that adorns the walls. make your way up the nearby hill, you can get some better views of the city, including of Mount Uluda. This mountain is well known in Turkey for its skiing, although it still looks pretty green from what I can tell down here. It's a national park and they have a really nice cable car or teleferik that will give you some stunning views. I've been up there before and it's definitely worth it if you have the time.
Continuing up the hill, we arrived at Topani Park. Here is another popular tourist place as it houses the tombs of the Ottoman Empire's first two sultans. The mausoleum of Orhan Ghazi, the second sultan, is actually built where a church once stood. Many of the other sultan mausoleums are octagon in shape, but this one is square. The mosaic floor also gives clues to its past as a church. Next is the tomb of Osman Ghazi. Osman Ghazi is the founder of the Ottoman Empire, and his tomb is protected by guards. I've been here before and I never saw this, so maybe it's new, but at first the two guys flanking each side of the door stood so still that I thought they were fake. <laughs> For dinner, our friends took us to a restaurant just next to the park that offered some really nice views. We tried a variety of foods including chikufta, and I've shown these before in a video, but those were made with bulgur, a type of grain, and these ones are actually made with raw meat, if you can believe it. I tried one out since they're a bit of a specialty, and I have to say, I never would have guessed it was raw meat. The real star of the show was the Iskander kebab. Iskander is a type of kebab that originated right here in Bursa. It features your traditional doner kebab meat that's covered in a tomato sauce, but underneath there's actually cut up bread that's been drenched in melted butter. And of course, there's a big dollop of yogurt on the side. After a good night's rest, we started our next day in Borsa Strong with some breakfast to share before heading back into the city. We wanted to make a complete tour of all the Ottoman Sultan mausoleums, so we stopped off at this one real quick where the fourth Sultan's tomb was. over to the Tofash Museum. Tofash was a Turkish brand of car, which I honestly never heard of before moving here, but my husband says it's legendary, so I'll take his word for it. This museum offers a look not only into the history of the car, but also the progression of wheeled transportation in Turkey. If you're a car fan, you might enjoy a quick stop here. The museum is small and it's free to enter. Next was one of the more interesting places for me to visit, which was the Ulu Umay Museum of Ottoman Folk, Costumes, and Jewelry. This unassuming tiny museum boasts a large collection of traditional Ottoman-era clothes and accessories. It's actually the private collection of just one man, but it's really impressive. 
The Ottoman Empire was massive, so it was fun to see the variations of traditional costumes from all over. Many were actually quite colorful, and it made me realize that we dress very dull in comparison today. road was the Muradier Manuscripts Museum. There are examples here depicting how old Qurans were written from calligraphy to bookbinding. But I have to say, what I found most interesting were the works of art on display featuring a Turkish marbling technique called Ebru. I think these are so beautiful, especially when you get up close to see all the detail. I'd love to attend some sort of workshop on this one day, so I'll have to put that on my bucket list of things to do in Turkey. Next to this museum is the Muradier Kuliesi. It's a nice little area to walk around in with different buildings, again featuring more tombs of Ottoman Empire family members, as well as the tomb of the last sultan buried in Bursa, Murad II. We had one more tomb to check off our list, but first we made a pit stop for a little dessert. I tried this one called Kazan Dibi, and what makes this so unique is that it's actually made with chicken. I'd never think to put chicken in a dessert, but it was actually quite tasty. It has a unique gelatinous texture, but if you can get over that, you might like it. Thank you so much for watching this little video of mine. I really appreciate your time. If you'd like to see more from my perspective as an American living in Turkey, please consider subscribing to my YouTube channel and giving this video a thumbs up. Until next time, thanks!